and welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Demacia Sacrifice. It's a deck I really liked playing before and I've played this deck quite a bit off stream. It's a fun one to play um, and it's a, it's a good deck. Basically what we're doing here is we are um, playing a deck where we don't really mind if our stuff dies because we can generate a lot of value when our things die. Whether it's last breath triggers like Cursed Keeper and the Undying, having that last breath trigger, and also Grizzled Ranger. You know, so we can make four fours with Curse Keeper and Grizzled Ranger, or the Undying keeps coming back. Or maybe it's it's leveling up our champions. Callista levels up when we have three things die, Lucian levels up when we have four things, or a Senna die. And once we have the leveled up champions, our deck gets pretty hard to stop, whether we're, you know, attacking twice a turn with the Lucians, or um, Callista's bringing back some uh some allies to help the attacking it's like pretty fun to play um you know nice little tricks you know with like our, our glimpse beyond ravenous butcher um chronicler of ruins we have our ways to be able to kill our own things or even like single combat have them die also blighted care caretaker kills some of our allies gets us some saplings to be able to have some more challengers and everything like that that's a good one uh, last time we played this, I didn't use Fleet Feather Tracker, and that's something that I've kind of added in, because I wanted a one-drop in this deck, and Fleet Feather Tracker, I feel like it's just the best one-drop. Um, you know, that Challenger ability is really nice. So we got a couple of Fleet Feather Trackers in here for some cheaper interaction. You can see I've cut down to only two Undying, because of all these aggro decks, the Undying's not so good against, because it's a little too slow, and it can't block. Um, so we're only playing two instead of three. Um, yep, that's our deck. Here we go, Demacia Sacrifice. I think our luck's gonna turn around. I like this deck. So, nice. Glasgow, this is one of your favorite decks too? I like it. How much for me to build around the Siren? Donation decks are just $10. That is it. Yep. Um... So yeah, and that's that's for everybody watching on YouTube also. If you have a deck that you really want me to play, um, just ten dollar donations and I and I'll play your deck. You just tell all you have to do is put the code in. Like there's there's the donation link on the YouTube video description. Put the code in there, and um, and then just let me know what day you want me to play it. And with a $10 donation, I also will build the deck for you. So if you have an idea, like if you want a deck built around like the Siren, like Rex was asking, if you have something you want me to build around, same thing. Just $10 donation to say, hey, can you build a deck that has these cards on and play it on Tuesday? And I'll, you know, and I'll play it on Tuesday. So that's always open. Always available. I fight with my hey, there we go. Thank you, Rex. All right, so tomorrow, anytime, a deck built around the siren. All right, sounds good. Let me write that down, make sure we get that tomorrow. Okay. I will build you my best siren deck for tomorrow. We, we shall not rest until all the double rekindler this early is kind of awkward. As you can see, it's turn three. We're four turns away from possibly playing one. It's pretty awkward. But besides that, we've had a good start. We've had a good turn. You know, our turns one, two, and three have been very solid. No complaints there. So we're facing Karma as. And Rekindler is not a bad card. Necessarily, I just. Um, 
Just a ways away from playing it. This is not very patient. Honestly, consider just passing the turn. What would be really like my best case scenario would be I pass the turn, and so like that's why because my best case scenario would be I pass the turn, they play like Chump Wump, and then I'm able to single combat, kill one of my things, kill the Chump Wump, level up Callista, then go to attacks. So I really thought about passing the turn. Did seem like a little bit of a waste of um Hmm. A little bit of a waste of on guard to cast that card. Perfect. We get to level up Callista. So now even if they kill Callista, then our Rekindlers will be bringing back leveled up Callistas. This works out very well. I do like the voice they have for Grizzled Ranger quite a bit. Comes in, he's like, how are you doing? Not a bad turn for my opponent. Not a bad turn at all. This is so, so tempting to play the Atrocity, but Rekindler is just a lot better play, especially like they're down to three mana now. This is just the play, but... Alright, GG's. See, there we go. We just had to turn to old trusty Demacia Sacrifice. Ooh, we got the card back. Awesome. All right, let's go get the other card backs. Cause I went to I went to level twenty three for all these regions to get the uh, champion capsule first. All right, so we we have Noxus, Ionia, and Demacia left. Um, Demacia is gonna be my last one because we got like the Garen sleeves and everything too. So Ionia or Noxus? Looks like Ionia is farther ahead. Um. So sure, we'll go get Ionia. <laughs> Nice. Got a card back. Two more to go. 
Three more to go. <laughs> Three more to go. the burn deck. Man, I knew burn was getting really popular, so I tried building some anti-burn decks today. <laughs> it just didn't work out. At least, at least two of the three so far. My, my three anti-burn decks were the Ionia decks with just playing a bunch of... Um, you know, playing, playing a bunch of uh, health potions. But... The problem is, is the two, the two other decks that are not the Ionia decks. These are the two decks that we are playing against all the burn decks with. All right, but anyway, um, this is kind of tough. So I'm attacking turn two, and then I'm attacking turn four. My best play this turn is Curse Keeper Ravenous Butcher. That's my best play. And... And so I'm probably doing this wrong. But I wanted to see if I could get my champions in play before I play like Caretaker or flip the champions. Yeah, why'd I have to have another one of those? Well, that's a attack. Problem is this costs five mana. I don't have five mana. Oh, okay. Um... Can we race him? I can do this. So we're down to eight with an attack. Explosives down to seven. Maybe we can kill them here. Obviously, I could go just straight to attacks. We're, we're attacking for eight. 
but all they need is like a one mystic shot and they stay alive. Right, then they have a whole nother turn to do seven damage to me. Looks like I'm dead, according to the opponent. Doesn't work out. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if I if I would have just gone straight to attacks, they would have had to use the burn spell on on my creature. I don't think that necessarily means that we would have won. Uh, they still would have, like, post-combat, they would have played that 3-1. They would have still had that. That would have been 5 damage. They would have had 2 draws to find 2 damage. You know, because, like, their draw step and then my draw step. Because it was going to take 2 more turns for me to kill them. So, I don't know. I like my line. Question is, why don't you run it Neverglade Collector in this deck? Neverglade Collector, of course, is the um, the five drop. Um, the drains whenever you have something die. That could potentially use it. It's a little slow. You see, like I'm not really playing five mana cards, um, and it doesn't really attack or block. Get rid of all of these. Um, there are certainly situations where Neverglade Collector looks really good, and, and it is a good card. But I don't, I don't really know what I'd want to, like. One problem that my deck has sometimes is going too wide, and it could just kind of muck up the battlefield some more. Potentially. So I feel like we need to get just a little bit bigger. I know I could play the tracker first, but I'd rather have the single combat available. No, not really, Dr. Muff. No. No, I'm just kind of just, just focused on this game and I don't I honestly don't really even think about it too much. Um, you know, trying to find 
different things to do in this metagame and, and uh, where to attack it and things like that. I thought I would a lot more than I actually do, I guess. I like it. Chung Chung, thank you so much. Well, thank thank you so much, Chung Chung. That's really kind of you. Keeping that Twitch Prime going, even though you don't don't play Legends of Runeterra too much, you are awesome. Thank you. damage. Oh, this Radiant Guardian is going to be such a pain. Don't get in my way. We can do this. Okay. It's not getting easier. Not getting easier. It's better than Radiant Guardian and Unyielding Radiant Guardian. You play that in your Heimer Teemo. Nice. We tried that last last game, standalone mid range. I played, you know, I had two Radiant Guardians and three Unyielding Spirits. We tried that, but every time we played Unyielding Spirit, my opponent had Will of Ionia. Certainly wish I didn't. Um, Certainly wish I didn't block the previous turn. There is life, there is hope. What am I doing? I eat this thing.
we go. Never back down from what you believe. All right, so they're gonna stay at twenty. But Radiant Guardian's gone. Thankfully. And Illusion's leveled up. Yeah, I have been yeah, I've definitely thought about that some QQ. Um But you know, haven't haven't really gone that direction yet. Yeah, not yet. Maybe in the future, but not not something that I want to quite do quite yet. Oh, come on, stop! I don't think I attack with Lucian. That's what I was, that's what I was thinking about was whether or not to trade Lucian and and uh, Lux. Shine with me. I, know, I certainly may end up regretting not trading. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I know Lux is good, but Lucian's like how I could potentially win this. And obviously, I'm not getting nearly as much damage in. Well, I mean, I would. If we would trade, I would get an extra three points of damage in. Yeah, I could have atrocity to try to kill Lux. We don't know. They, they could have had another recall. May need to protect against, like, a judgment. That's something I have to worry about. And if I would have used the atrocity there, we're not, we're not getting full value out of the atrocity, as in, like, we're not getting an extra attack with Lucian. Force them to have something else. That would level up Lux. I don't know. Maybe I was just supposed to attack with Illusion. So this will keep the Lux from leveling up. Get us an attack.
fun. It's like this is how this is how life goes sometimes. Thinking like there's a lot of there's a lot of aggro in the metagame. So I want to play a lot more health potions and radiant guardians and those cards didn't work for me, and now my opponent's playing a bunch of health potions and radiant guardians and messing me up. That's life. Alright, fine. I'll quit my yapping. What? Oh yeah, they gained five. <laughs> right. So Karma's leveled up. Heart and mind as one. We'll bring peace to Ionia, whatever the cost. Two mana draw for. Oh, that's not the first time something died this turn. Right. I was thinking that was going to be rallying. Uh, the two one died. Dang it. Uh, I messed this all up. Um, is Darius an okay swap? I would. I probably wouldn't play Darius. I think I'd, I'd rather have um, Katarina or or um, Cato the Arm. Man, that was just such a complete waste by me. That was really bad. Was really bad. Or the armored tusk rider, I'd rather have that card. Oh, remember it has new new targets now. Yeah, if I would have if I would have pulled the the thing over to the end, then they would have had to block with karma or with Lux. They would have had to block with Lux if I would have instead of pulling to the front. If I would have pulled to the end, I would have had to block with Lux. So if that was the thing I should have done, just kind of on tilt from how today's all working, aren't I? Just not thinking clearly. Yeah, yeah, basically armored tusk with that with the frostbite with all the frostbite cards I think would be pretty cool. 
Um, because even if it, even if they want to block with something that does that's five plus power, you can also you can frostbite it. So that could be a pretty neat card. Don't blink or you miss me. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Gotcha. Give me something to play. All right, that's something to play at least. So it's not going to be the best play to caretaker. To just play a caretaker. So now the question is caretaker or grizzled ranger. I I'm going to go caretaker because then we'll have two extra mana for single combat. As well. Really. Okay. Alright, let's miss some folks up. Well now we're playing the Grizzled Ranger. So where we're at, we're at May 6th. So is there, there's a patch update every month, right? Like that's, that's basically how it always has been. So the next patch update would be in six days. So what do y'all think? Do y'all, do y'all think that there is anything either A, that will change or B, that should change? Is there anything, if you were in charge of the, I guess that's a separate question, but yeah, is there, if you're in charge of the patch update, is there anything you would do? Um, but then also, what do you think will happen? I don't miss. No, I think it's it's definitely possible something changes. Uh, the question was, nothing will change because it's too early, right? I think it's possible something changes not necessarily saying that anything needs to change I'm just saying that it's possible yeah I pawn I think I think you're right you're actually right where I'm kind of thinking um, yeah I would look at Braum to make Braum better buffing up Braum and yeah maybe reduce burn effect a slight amount I kind of agree with both of those. What I think I would do as far as... All right, how many creatures is this going to be? If I go Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker, that's going to be one, two, three, four. That's going to be four creatures. I only have room for three creatures. Hmm. That's fine. Um, I don't know how, how to make Braum better. I mean, really how to make Braum better is give Braum actual power. Right? Have Braum be like a 2-5. But 
but I don't know if they, I don't know if like with Brahm's design and like his, you know, his flavor, all that kind of stuff, I don't know if they want him to, to have power. He needs to be able to just attack on his own. Brahm is the worst of the champions. Um, as far as, like, if there's, like, something to make burn just a little bit worse. I wonder if it's Boom Crew Rookie, if if Boom Crew Rookie should be changed to be a 1-3, not a 1-4. Because how it attacks, it's basically attacking as a 3-4 creature for 2 mana. I wonder if, wonder if that would be a decent change. Three mana. The grow follows. Ready yourself. I'm just really hesitant to play this single combat because then I feel like they're going to play like Karma or Ezreal and I'm not going to have a single combat for it and I'm going to be sad. If I don't use a single combat, they did play the two spells because they played the Concussive Palm and that spell, so they, they did play two spells so they were going to be able to, like they were going to get the 2-1 the Life Linker here. Is that worth? Doing that over? I don't know. Okay, so with Braum, you wouldn't add power. You would make it um, just like how many times he, he, he blocks or has been blocked. Or just lower the amount to level them up instead of 10. Lower it. Something like 6 or something. I'll find vengeance on my own. I can see that leveled up Braum has... No, leveled up Braum just gets more toughness, right? Doesn't gain more... Doesn't gain any power. But of course, if you're, you know, anybody watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you, what you would do. Because I think there will be um, a patch update in, in uh, six days. I think next Tuesday. If, if they're consistent with just, you know, since, basically since January, since I've been playing. Um, I should have Lucian after Callista. But it doesn't it doesn't matter with them not having blockers. Alright, rummaged away Ezreal and Yone, and we went. So both of our wins against Karma Ezreal. We we're also one in four with or Ezreal Karma. We we're also one in four with Ezreal Karma. Ezreal Karma not looking too impressive. Or 
Or you're thinking that the Poro that the leveled up Braum would make would have stats equal to the damage Braum takes and survives. So if you risk high damage to the challenge, you get high reward. So whenever, so basically a leveled up Braum would say, I guess you'd write that as, whenever Braum takes damage, create a Poro with, um, I don't know, I guess attack and health, I think that's their language, with attack and health equal to the amount of damage taken. Just try this out. Okay, yeah, and, and with Overwhelm. So yeah, if, if Braum survives 4 damage, it'd be a 4-4 four, four Overwhelm. I feel like leveled up Braum takes like little small points of damage a lot though, so you'd only get like 1-1s one, and 2-2s. Two, I feel like it, it could be a downgrade in a lot of scenarios. All right, felt the sizzle. Now where's the steak? We haven't had a Lucian into Senna hand yet. It's like next turn I can go Chronicler, kill the Senna, revive Senna, but level up Lucian. And I do like attacking Lucian first in this scenario, because if they have a Radiant Strike or a Tough, they would want to block, the, they want to kill Lucian, and it's like have them kill Lucian. And then, um, hmm. Do I still want to do, so Chronicler, yeah. I'll bring them. So now if they want to challenge Lucian, We'll have Senna be double attack. Eat up, friend. No one goes hungry. find vengeance on my own such a metal line so metal Vengeance to rest. 
Badger Bear, I want them to have to block with Fiora. So they challenge and kill the 3-3, three, three. then I get to attack. So they challenge and kill Lucian, they need protection, which I don't believe they at least they don't have three mana protection because otherwise they would have just not played that badger bear to block with and they wouldn't be right, thinking it so much up. now yeah yeah i'm up, yeah, yeah, I'm up. Question is, do I throw this Grizzled Ranger in there first? I think that answer is no. I'm attacking with the two four powers first, and then the threes, and then Lucian. Oh, or they're going to do this. Back with your yapping. Took the wrong turn, didn't you? What a pity. Now this makes my life real easy. All right. GG, three and two. There we go, got a winning record. Look at us. Playing some hard fought games, getting a winning record. So there we go, that's Demacia Sacrifice. Get to be pretty aggressive. Get to have some really good synergy and uh, that's, that's the main thing. Get a lot of synergy between all this stuff. And you know, you have like the cool self-sacrifice stuff. Um, so, you know, pretty like this is a fun deck to play. I really do enjoy playing this deck. There's a lot of decisions to make all the time as far as sequencing goes, and um, and you know, like what to sacrifice, when, all that kind of stuff. Did like the trackers? I think the, the trackers were a good addition. Um, and yeah, pretty fun deck. So there we go. Um, is there an MMR for ranked? Does LP exponentially increase on the win streaks? I, I'm not exactly sure. I think it, it does in like master's rank. Like you do start getting more. So I, I think there is. I'm not sure about like for for some of those other ranks though, because it feels like you know like diamond and platinum. Like you gain 20 if you win, and you lose 20 if you lose. Um, and you know it just kind of goes back and forth like that. I don't think there's any extra there, but I think I think in Masters ranks there are. Uh, right, right now we are Diamond one or two. We're like about to be in Masters again. You know, like was a course in Masters before the reset with the new set coming out, um, and we're about to be there again. But but yeah, I know I know before like you definitely saw a big change. Um, with with the rank like if you if you start winning a lot in a row like you do gain go up more or losing a lot in a row you do go down faster but I know that they they changed that their algorithm a, a slightly they slightly changed their algorithm one of the last patches where it it's not as uh, there's not as much variance for like in master's rank of going up and down as much for wins and losses so I'm not sure if there was anything changed with that kind of thing.
thing. But um, basically, as far as I know, I haven't seen any like I, I usually like read all the articles of like all their patch notes and everything. And I haven't read any article. I haven't read anywhere where they state that you do gain more or uh, for win streaks or less or, you know, you lose more for losing streaks. I haven't seen any official words, so I guess I don't have that. Yes, master is the the top rank, and then when when you get to master, you get a number. Um, so you know, like you, so like if you're master one, then you you know you're ranked number one in your region. Like each, you know, like there's different there's the uh, different servers, um, and so you know you actually have a number. So you, you know you win your your number goes down because you get closer to number one, and you lose your number goes up. All right, but uh, yeah, so that's Demacia's Sacrifice. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the deck. Or, um, you know, next week we may have an update patch, like where they may um, update some cards, um, you know, shake things up a little bit. It's possible. And if, if that does happen, let me know in the comments what do you think uh, should happen. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Demacia's Sacrifice, and I'll see you for the next video.